Hi everybody, Gary Williams here for Toolbarn.com's Barn Banner, and today we're going to talk about cabinets. Not the kind that the President of the United States has with those secretaries of this, that, and the other thing. No, we're going to talk about cabinets that are actually useful to us. I'm not saying the political cabinets are not, but cabinets that are actually useful to us in our everyday lives. You know, we put oh, gallon buckets of paint in there, we put uh, dishes, we put glasses, we put tools in cabinets. We've got them all over our house. And, you know, we don't really think of them unless they get all messed up or they break or the door falls off or one thing or another. So cabinets are a big deal and we've had a lot of requests to address that in our suggestion box. So we're going to do that. We're going to show you some tools uh, from DeWalt, some really cool planers that help take crummy pieces of wood and turn them into really very nice usable pieces of wood that are great for cabinet projects. And then we're going to go in and show you some uh, different kinds of ways to join wood, some different wood joints that'll uh, bring your project up to the next level and give it a nice finished type of a look. Finally, we're going to talk to a homeowner who's taken what he's learned about tools and techniques, and this guy is not a professional carpenter, but when you see the results of a bar project he completed in his family room, you'll think that he probably was. Now, we had a little bit of help, but it's a really nice project, and we're going to show you more. So grab a cold one. We'll be right back. Whenever you're working with wood, you know that not every piece you've got to mess with is going to be perfect, right? You're going to have a piece of wood that's got a little warp in it or got some gnarly rough spots in there that you're going to want to smooth out just to make your project look a little more professional and a little more finished when you're all done with it. So there are different ways to smooth that wood out. Now, you can take a sanding block like this with some sandpaper and go to work on it. But you know, that's only good if you've got like the rest of your life uh, to take care of that and you're planning on starting young because it's really a slow process. Seriously though, uh, some people like this, it'll smooth out some things, but you really don't want to count on it for a lot of heavy duty work. Uh, some people do like manual planers because they feel like it gives them a little more precision and if it's not a huge, huge project uh, that you're working on, you can, you can get by with a manual planer. Um, we've got a couple from DeWalt that we think do the job really well. This is a three and a quarter inch electric uh, hand planer and this thing will take care of a, a planing job on a piece of wood really uh, very 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 quickly makes 34,000 cuts per minute it's got a five and a half amp motor um, it's really a good piece of equipment and I'm going to show you a little bit of how this thing works on this board right here this is just a rough piece of wood so it's not going to be a you know a real detailed job here but I just want to give you an idea how this thing works Now, I didn't put the collector on here because I wanted you to see the outflow. Did you get a load of that stuff? It looks like snow in the middle of December, doesn't it? I'm going to cut a little bit more and watch what's coming out of here. Boy, it not only smooths out the board, but it's almost festive looking, isn't it? No, it's a, it's a great piece of equipment. And, it, and as you can see, it took a pretty lousy piece of wood and made it look pretty nice and I can tell you it's a pretty smooth piece of wood too right now so that's one way to get that job done. Now if you're looking for something a little more powerful, a little more size, then DeWalt's got a bigger planer. You knew they did right? You knew that they had a bigger planer. This is a 13 inch, uh, I'm going to double check the specs here, but it's a 13 inch three knife planer and this thing has got a 15 amp motor uh, and it cuts at uh, two speeds, either 96 or 100, 179 uh, cuts per inch. That's a different measure than the other one. That was uh, cuts you know, per minute. This is cuts per inch. So uh, it'll do a great job of taking a larger piece of wood and you run it through here. It feeds uh, kind of like, it looks like a big bread machine, doesn't it? But it's not. Uh, but you can feed uh, a large piece of board through here. Uh, it'll pretty much feed itself once you get everything set up. There are a lot of adjustments here so that you get the proper depth of, uh, of work or smoothing on your board. So it's a great tool and it's a great device to have if you're going to be doing cabinet work or any kind of uh, detailed work in your home with wood. Okay, so you, you run all your wood through the planers. You've got nice, smooth, and, and squared wood to work with. You've got to put it together. So how do you do that? Well, you use joints, of course, to do that. And there are all different kinds of joints. We've got a blog that'll show you a lot of those, but I'm just going to show you some of the simple ones right now. You, you've got the basic, what's called a butt joint, two pieces of wood, 
they just go to, uh, together perpendicularly like that and in the end you'd drill a, or drive a couple of nails or you'd glue or you'd screw those things together. And it's a strong joint but it doesn't really have a lot of structural integrity on its own so uh, if you're going to use it make sure that it is strong enough for the purpose you've got in mind. Now again the butt joint just like that that's not to be confused with a butt crack. That's a plumbing term has nothing to do at all with uh, making joints in wood, so just wanted to clarify that for you. Now, the other, uh, another kind of joint that is uh, pretty easy to make with the right tool, this is a, uh, a pocket jointer from Craig, it's a pocket jig, um, is the pocket joint, and basically, what's cool about that is that you hide the screws that you're using to join the wood, you join it like so, you put the screws in the uh, slots right there, the, uh, the screws are basically invisible when you've got this thing done, and it's a very, very strong joint. We ha uh, have more on that in episode 11, so take a look at that, and we'll show you how this little thing works. It's really very handy and very simple to use, and it's, it makes really, it's a, it's a great way to join wood together. So take a look at that. There are also tongue and groove joints, and those are seen, you see that in a lot of siding or flooring and other applications, but basically it's kind of like it sounds. You've got a, a tongue coming out of one end of a, a board and a groove in the other, they fit together like so and they make a nice uh, uh, meeting place at the top and they, it looks nice and it's functional and it kind of keeps things in place and keeps them aligned. So tongue and groove. Miter joints are, are joints that probably everybody is familiar with. And these things, you know, I always kind of think of these primarily as picture frame type joints. A couple of 45 degree angles on the end. You put them together like so, glue and, or, or different types of joiners for these things. They, they make nice corners. They're good for trim, picture frames, and a whole lot of other uses. So uh, miter joints are, are very, very common, and they're just a, a nice looking way to, to put pieces of wood together. There are a lot of other more complex uh, uh, joints that we talk about on our blog, on our website. Uh, for example, there is a mortise and tenon, which is a very strong joint. But it's, uh, you know, it's not a real easy one to make. It's a little more advanced and you need a jig for that a lot of times. And it's just uh, uh, something that's been around for a long, 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 long time. Very strong, but yeah, take a look at that. Um, we've also got some other types of uh, joints in there. We've got box joints, which are also known as finger joints. And you've probably seen those, for example, in drawers. There are a bunch of little rectangles cut in the ends of the, uh, the sides and the back of the drawers. They interlock, they're glued together, very strong, very sturdy. But again, a little bit more complicated to make. So there are a whole bunch of different ways to join wood. And we've got a lot of those listed and we show you some of those on that blog. So take a look at that. So we've shown you some of the great tools that you can use in cabinetry. And we've shown you some of the joints that you can uh, employ when you're trying to build a, a nice cabinet. And I'm gonna uh, talk to a guy right now who kind of put all that together himself with the help of some of his friends and really uh, built a great bar. You sort of raised the bar on bars, didn't you, Dave? So that was our intent. You put this together. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about what you did to, to build this thing. What kind of things, uh, what techniques you used, how you just managed to bring it all together. Well, once the kids kind of got grown up, it was time to work, work on something for myself and my wife. Yeah. And so, sure. We compromised on a kitchen type bar area like this. I wanted a man's cave and it yeah. didn't quite go that way. So yeah. we compromised and I liked the compromise. It worked out well. So the, one of the first things we did was we had to build a base to set the cabinets on and a half wall to, uh, to, to connect the two together right. and also uh, to, to run our electrical because I have electrical outlets on this side also. So we built the base and then we needed to build the, the frame or the box of the cabinets that was gonna mount on that base. All right. And so there's three pieces. We have uh, the first section here, and then uh, for the sink, and then the third piece here. So Dave, you're not, you're not a carpenter by profession. You, uh, you do things because you like to do them, but you do other things for a living. But So th this, this project was really kind of a labor of love for you, but what's the lesson in something like this? We don't have time to go into a how-to, how'd you do every single thing but it looks great, it looks professional. What's the lesson for people who would like to tackle a, a big job like that? Well, you know, what you wanna do is, is first of all, you wanna, you wanna plan it out well. You wanna use any sources you have for knowledge. So YouTube's a great source for knowledge. Barn Banner too. We can Barn Banner, exactly. You can, you <laughs> yeah. can go to yeah. Barn yeah. Banner, you, yeah. you can find all kinds of ways to use tools and, and how to use them correctly and, and applications for them. Sure. Uh, and then, if, if you 
have the right uh, equipment, you know, the right tools, then you can get those quality uh, finishes that you want, whether whether it's cutting a board and having it sit square, right. uh, and those kind of finishes that you want. Uh, the other thing is take your time. What's you know, if you have a project that you love doing, do it right. Mm -hmm. Slow down. Spend enough time to get it, you know, sand it nice. Mm -hmm. Get it, good finishes on them. Uh, don't be afraid to take your time and do it right. So for for the tools that we use, we use the the table saw, Proline table saw. Mm -hmm. We use the joiner. Uh, we use uh, our for the, we use the dado blade in our table saw. Right. Uh, sanders, different types of sanders, depending on if we were trying to get into crevices or, or large uh, surface areas, we were using different sanders there. So okay, yeah. So you used good tools. You used good materials. Uh, a lot of people can get good tools. A lot of people can buy good materials. Um, Beyond that, it would seem like the key ingredient would be just the patience and the planning to carry it off. So That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, you really have to have the patience and you really have to have the plan. And when you're when you're executing, uh, if you make a mistake, fix it. Do it right. All right. So that's right. Uh, that's another lesson. Is uh, you know you can always uh, wood is very forgiving. You can fill it or you can replace it. It's not, it's pretty. Trim pretty. pieces are really nice to have, aren't they? Trim and fascia, they, you know, that's, that's always. Tr yeah. Trim hides a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't look like you hid much here. It looks like you've got a really a nice quality finish to it that uh, you really put a lot of effort into it and it paid off. Uh, if you had to give anybody uh, a word of advice, uh, uh, somebody who's, who's watching this and who thinks, gosh, I'd like to try that, but I don't think I can do it. What would you tell them? You can do it. And the quality and is, is based on your tenacity and your patience and your execution. And your willingness to learn what you're doing. The willingness to, to, to bone up on what you need to know before you do it. What do you need to know? Saw blades, uh, finishes, different types of, types of cuts, different types of joints, uh, different things like that. Take that, the time and learn those, right? That's right. Take your time to learn them and uh, don't be afraid to ask. Look, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not rocket science, but it is, it is exacting. And if you want to finish product, take the time uh, required to learn about what you're doing, learn about things like joints, learn about things like uh, wood and, and how to cut it and how to finish it and do those things. And uh, you can come up with some really great results if you do those things. Um, it's not rocket science, it's just hard work and attention to detail. So. That's uh, our program for today. We appreciate the fact that you joined us and we hope that you'll join us again. Thanks.